When we design applications, the first question which comes to our mind is how confident are we in making sure that this particular application doesn't go down and the application is always available to serve the clients. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to design highly available microservices architecture with an example. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. This is the target state which we want to achieve. But before that, let's start the application design from scratch. Most of the time when you join a team which already did microservices or in fact an application which is already in production, you would have heard about the terms high availability, disaster recovery, load balancers, replications, etc. Let's look at where do we introduce these concepts in the architectural design. For instance, let's take an example where a user is trying to access an UI and this UI is having something called as a payment service and the payment service connects to a database. So this is the example which we are going to take to understand how to create highly available architectural pattern. This is a simple application where we have two different services. One service is used by the user directly. The other service connects to a database to process some transactions and it does something for its business logic. Now for the sake of this discussion, let's imagine that this particular deployment is present in a data center which is in the US East. And also let's imagine the user is also from the US East region as well. Now everything will be fine if everything is up and running. But the moment UI service goes down, the user won't be able to access the application. So what do we generally do? We create another instance of the UI service so that we can create high availability by providing a parallel instance which we deploy in the same region. So this is generally called as local high availability where you're making sure that there are two instances of the same application running just to make sure that the application doesn't go down. So even if one instance in the US East one goes down, the other instance is there to serve the user. So same way we want to do the same for the payment service and the database service as well. So it all depends upon our feasibility. For the sake of our discussion, let's say that I want to create a very critical system. This is doing some payment transactions. I'm trying to create a payment wallet, let's say. So in order to make our system highly available, I'm replicating my applications into multiple instances in the same region. So I have two instances of UI service running, two instances of payment service running, and two instances of the database. And these databases are synchronously replicated. Basically, if I persist into one database, the other database gets immediately updated as well. And the same is applicable for the vice versa use case as well. Now everything is all fine. Now you have more and more users from some other region as well. Let's say we have a lot of users from US West and you want to expand your business. Now what will happen? There will be slight latency for the US West users because they are in a different geographical location. So what we generally do is we create a replication of this particular deployment into some other region. Let's say we call it US West. So we have different data center in US West as well. And for the sake of making the system highly available, we deploy it in US West as well. Now the architecture looks amazingly well because it's serving people from US East and it's serving people from US West. But there are some complexities which we need to understand and mitigate before getting this architecture into production. So the first basic thing is how do we handle requests? Because there are two different deployments, there are four different instances of UI service, there are four different instances of payment service and the database. Now how do we handle requests and how do we redirect requests? This is the first problem which we'll be tackling. The next one is data consistency. How will I make sure the data which is present inside US East is in sync with the US West data. That is the second major hindrance which we will hit into when we create replicated deployments in different regions. Now, how do we handle this? In order to handle the request, we can introduce a load balancer. The load balancer will take care of routing request based on the user. If there are more users from US East, the request will be redirected to the US East service. And if there are people from US West, it will be redirected to the US West service. 
and if let's say there are people from europe the europe people will be redirected to the us east rather than the us west because that is more closer to the europe region so that is how load balancer works so in order to handle the request we can solve the problem of redirecting request using load balancers so in in our case we will have to introduce load balancer in every single layer so ui servers will communicate with the load balancer to connect with the payment servers and the payment servers needs to now connect with the load balancer to un- understand and identify which database is closer the next challenge is data consistency now how do we handle data consistency obviously we will have to replicate our data from one database to another that is the only way isn't it the moment you persist something in the usts it needs to be replicated to all the other databases whether it is in the same region or with is outside the same region so we will have to make sure replications are taken care within the us east one whatever setup we have these are all like local high availability configurations which we have done so the latency will be very less so it will be very quickly updated but however if we have cross region replications then the data is going to take a while to be replicated because there will be network latency introduced as well because you have data centers maybe 1000 kilometers apart or maybe more these replications are categorized into different types synchronous replication and asynchronous replication mostly synchronous replication is useful when you have local high availability setup and asynchronous replication is enabled for systems which are in different geographical locations are these the only problems which we need to tackle no there is one more problem which is the cost most of the time when you design applications cost is a major factor when it comes to designing highly available architectures because you could be working on a low risk application where the investment is very less and people say that they don't want to invest much on high availability because they are okay with a day or more that's when the cost angle changes the whole landscape of the highly available architectures obviously there are different ways to look at this some applications will have deployments in only one region and there could be applications which have deployments in two regions serving different users at the same time parallelly there is a terminology which is associated with this we call it disaster recovery so in our case let's say i want to have my primary production deployment to be running only on us east so i will have deployments only on us east and i will consider my us west as a dormant region so i'll call that as a disaster recovery zone but if let's say i want to have a very high critical application i want to have no downtime when i flip between production to disaster then i will have an architectural pattern something called as active active pattern so when you have disaster recovery systems you will still have a way to immediately flip between different regions a typical example could be netflix we don't want to have netflix going down because there could be millions of users who are streaming data from netflix that's when netflix decides okay i will be deploying applications in multiple regions and multiple availability zones and i'll have my deployment as active active that way none of my system goes down even if the us west goes down i'll have us east to cover and even if us east goes down i'll have us west to cover obviously don't ask me if both goes down what happens obviously you will have to make sure if both goes down then you will have to have a backup again the other case which people use when they don't want to create active active scenario is active passive this basically means you can deploy applications in us west however the downtime is little more because your applications in us west are not up and running to be readily served this happens to a system where we have a sla of like maybe 4 hours where you don't want to have applications in the dr always running and you have a lot of problems with respect to data then you don't want to take the hassle of doing replications between different regions and that's when you go for an active passive scenario and if you want to do a disaster recovery flip what we generally do we bring these us west services up we apply the replication and the replication is all asynchronous and it's going to take a lot of time for the data to be synced with the database so you will have to have an sla most of the time it is like 4 hours or more or maybe less it depends on the availability pattern and the criticality of the application in a particular company high availability is not something new which we discovered when we created microservices but this is a general concept used across any application whether it is microservices or monolith if you understand why do we do high availability and how do we mitigate the challenges in designing highly available architectures 
you can create more robust distributed systems be it monoliths or microservices i hope you understood how to create highly available architectural design patterns and how we can address the challenges which these architecture pose to us as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much